Hi, my name is Mary Vukicevic and you're watching the lectorial on um, principles of low vision rehabilitation. Okay, so um, essentially low vision rehabilitation is a new subspecialty of ophthalmology slash orthoptics and um, other people in the eye related field and of course we work with multidisciplinary um, teams so they can include disciplines like occupational therapists, orientation and mobility instructors, social workers and the like. Now um, up until this point in your training as an orthoptist we've described and discussed how to conduct an orthoptic and or ophthalmic examination of a patient but um, in this lectorial I'm going to share with you how we go about actually conducting a low vision uh, assessment of a person. So what I'd like you to do is think back to Mrs. Thelma Scope, your 72 year old patient that you're seeing at uh, Seawell Australia and what we need to remember about her is her visual acuity was in the range of 624, 636 that could not be improved with glasses. She had been a very active um, person um, both socially and in her working life and now she was struggling with advanced age-related macular degeneration. So how would we go about actually assessing her and um, finding out what's wrong firstly and then implementing a rehabilitation plan? So this lectorial is just about how we go about assessing her. I'm going to go to the um, lecture notes. Here we go. Okay, so in your initial low vision examination and evaluation, we need to do a few things. We need to know the outcome, so we need to therefore take a goal oriented history of the patient. We need to find out what she wants to do. We need to then evaluate and manage Mrs. Scope, and that includes examining her and doing some follow up. We need to monitor the outcome, and that can happen either in the clinic or on home visit. Or you can even check how someone's going at, by phone. And you sometimes need to modify your direction when needed. For example, um, if you provide her with a magnifier and it's just not suiting her needs, you might need to change that. Or if um, you, you just feel that she's not going to benefit from, say, something like electronic magnification because her vision's too poor, you need to give her a reality check and, and tell her that that goal perhaps might not be quite realistic. An initial low vision examination can take 60 minutes or even more if the patient is new to you. And um, each orthoptist has a, a different way of, of evaluating um, a low vision patient and as you start working in the area you'll develop your own method so there's really no right or wrong. So I'm going to give you some examples of typical questions that we ask new low vision patients and um, you can write them down and actually have them stored for your reference and, and ask them word for word when you're seeing your first patient um, or alternately you can uh, just have a conversation with them and um, use the questions as a prompt but you'll need to get the answers to all the questions in order for it to be beneficial for the person. So in terms of their visual history, what do we want to know? Well, we want to know things like when did you realise you had a vision problem? How long have they been having the problem? When was their last eye exam? Who their ophthalmologist is? What sort of treatment and surgery they have had or they are having? What ocular medications they might be on? whether there have been recent changes in vision. We want to know about any dramatic drops in vision um, or decreases in vision that they could have had. If they've had a previous low vision assessment and who and, and where was that done? What, what do they have that they're using to read with at the moment or to see things with at the moment? Glasses, magnifying glasses. You want to see, you want to find out about all of that stuff. How well do they think they're seeing? Is there a family history of any kind that's going to be important to you? And then we move on to psychosocial history. We want to know what is your present living situation. We want to know this not because you're being nosy about the personal life of Mrs. Thelmoscope. We just want to know if she's got any support networks at home. Is she living with somebody that is there um, that can assist her if needed or uh, if not, are there things you need to consider about a home environment that you have to take care of? Are you able to take care of yourself? 
sometimes we also ask about the, about the last school grade they completed, um, just so you know how to um, pitch your your explanation of things to her. We want to know if she smokes because that's going to impact on her um, vision and, and eye condition, especially with AMD. Has she had any rehabilitation training before? Her social or recreational activities, um, transportation, does she catch buses, transport by herself? Is she prone to using taxis, that sort of stuff? What her support networks are? Does she have family members come to the house or um, does she go to them? What's her, her friend network like? Um, again, not to be nosy, but we want to know what sort of support networks she's got. How do you feel about your vision loss? That's very important. Often when they're, um, pa these patients like Mrs Scope are seeing an orthoptist ophthalmologist in the clinic, we're asking um, what problems they're having, but not how they actually feel about their vision loss. And you, you'd be surprised. Some people are very resilient and other people not quite so. Mobility. So can you see well enough to get around outdoors? Do you drive? In the case of Mrs Scope, that would be a big problem if she was still driving with her visual acuity. Do you have mobility aids? Do you have glasses or optical devices that help you get around, for example, a uh, telescope? Do you have problems indoors? Uh, any issues with tripping over low objects like curbs and steps or objects at eye level? Or do you bump into one side of your body more than the other? And that might indicate that they've had a stroke and have either some neglect or hemianopia. Other things, distance vision history. Can you see street signs, shop signs, labels, faces? Do you go to the movies? Um, do you watch TV? What's the size of your TV screen? Do you have problems recognising colours? And you could ask for an explanation to that. It could just be that the, um, the colours are faded or it could be that they have a complete um, mix-up of colour vision. In terms of near vision, we want to know what sort of print Mrs Scope can read. Can she read newspaper headlines, large print, textbooks, typed print magazines and newspapers? Now, um, her vision, you have to go back and have a look at her visual acuity from the previous lecture and have a think about what she can actually see here. Um, I would suggest to you that she can see newspaper headlines and large print, but can she, with her vision, see textbooks, type print magazines and so on? We also want to know how much reading she does now. You know, if she's not really reading this, and, and, you know, we could ask why, we could implement strategies to get her back to reading if she, in fact, wants to do that. Um, does she have a light that she uses for reading? Um, has anything changed with the way she reads, especially since her vision has decreased? And do you want to read more than you presently do? So we need to find out what her needs are primarily. Activities of daily living are important too because we're not just thinking about reading, we're thinking about other things like housework, seeing to cook, seeing dials on uh, the dials on a stove. Can you see the flame on a stove if it's a gas flame? Um, that might need modification if she can't see the, the, whether the stoves are light. Can you see food on your plate? What about the number pad on your telephone? Can you actually make a call in the event that you need to contact somebody or you've, um, you've injured yourself and you need to dial triple O or something like that? And can you see to groom yourself, brush your hair, put your lipstick on, that kind of thing. Uh, other things about lighting, do you see better or is it more comfortable in bright light or is it better on a cloudy day? What about sunglasses, are you wearing those? Do you use a visor or a hat? Is there anything that bothers you about glare? Uh, do you have more trouble with your vision at night or during the day? So in photopic or scotopic conditions, and do you use extra light to improve your vision? And if so, what kind of light is that? You might like to have a look at that light if you're there on um, home visit. You can also identify residual function and you would do this as part of your initial assessment. And this can be done by um, formally administering a simple questionnaire such as the visual functioning questionnaire 25 or the VF14, there's a, there's a vast array of formal questionnaires available to you. Um, identifying residual function can also be done in an informal way. The readings that go along with this lectorial are going to help you to understand uh, the identification of residual function um, better. 
So residual visual function is the measurement, evaluation and documentation of the extent of the functional loss the patient has from his or her ocular disease. And that might be related to their refractive error, their visual acuity, contrast sensitivity, perimetry, those kind of things. Now, um, assessment of residual functional vision can be described as the level of, per of a person's functioning whilst performing vision related activities. And this is different to visual function, which is a specific measure of vision loss. So I'll go back to the previous one. So residual visual function, we're talking about refractive error, visual acuity, contrast sensitivity, perimetry. And here, um, functional vision is quite different to that where we're actually wanting to know how a person is performing uh, with the kind of vision loss that they have at any given time. Okay, so there are two um, separate readings for this particular um, lectorial that go together with it. Um, I'm just going to go back to me. Okay, here we go. Okay, so the two lectorials that you need to read, I think that screen's gone badly, here we go. Sorry, not the lectorials, the two um, references that you need to read. Here's the first one. It's Principles of Modern Low Vision Rehabilitation by Markowitz. And the second one is called Functional Vision Assessment. And this is a paper that I wrote for the Australian Orthoptic Journal. Now you'll find links to both of these papers on the LMS site. So you need to read these to understand the concepts of the um, lecture that I've just given you in more detail. Good luck.